Have you ever wondered why some gels cost more than others? In today's video, we'll be going over three key factors that drive up the cost of your gels and whether or not either of these factors is worth the splurge. Hey there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolafonsenails.com and I help you master all of your general services using Japanese soft gel only. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to consider exploring and at the end of this video, do consider subscribing. Factor number one, ingredients. Ingredients will most likely always be the primary reason why your gel nail products are much more expensive. And this factor matters greatly and is definitely worth the splurge, especially as a professional nail tech. Let's take a moment to learn about nail gel composition. Nail gels are made up of synthetic resins. These vary in price depending on the type of resin. For instance, nail glue is a type of resin. But here's a cool fact for all of us gel nail technicians, light curing resin is the most expensive type of resin. Look at us, we're fancy. What typically drives up the cost of a gel nail ingredient is the quality and also how much of those quality ingredients your gels are made up of. And if the manufacturer manufactures a nail gel from raw materials, i.e. from scratch. Like, did you buy the Caesar dressing at the store or did you buy all of the different components, right, and to your degree of great quality or not to make your own at home from scratch. Make sense? And disclaimer, for the sake of our brains and me erroring, this post won't be very sciencey as you may have already been able to tell by the Caesar dressing analogy. Either way, so now that you know you're working with the most expensive type of resin in the market, i.e. light current resin, how do you continue with choosing the best of the best? I know that if you're here, you want that. And guess what? So does your client. She doesn't go get her hair done and say, put the cheapest stuff you got on me. Or she doesn't get a facial and ask for the cheapest products that the therapist has. Am I right? But how do you know if what is inside your gel is quality? Especially when you are a nail tech by trade, not a scientist. The non-sciencey way is brand reliability. Just like you know Ugg boots are going to last you years and that is why you pay a premium for them, you may have that trustworthiness with a certain nail brand. You just know they are quality by their track record and their many years in the industry. And that's fair, but what about when and it's a new brand to you. Here's how to get to trusting the quality of a gel product when it is new to you. You want your gels to be more resin, more gel, and less dilution ingredients. Whereas with higher quality gels, more oligomer based and less monomer components, they are both resin materials. To my understanding, again, not a scientist. Just wanna break down the information somewhat so that you get it. So oligomers just have a significantly bigger molecular size than monomers. Think of oligomers as that viscous gel in your little pot of gel. Now think of monomers as the acrylic liquid for acrylic nails. Huge difference in viscosity, right? I could take any one of my pots and actually flip it over and the liquid, it's still liquid in here, it's not a solid, will not just run all over my table. But if I took like monomer, like acrylic liquid monomer, and just pour this, obviously that would pour. So you see the molecular level, the molecular weight is smaller here, right? Smaller molecules usually mean more liquidy. Thicker molecules or bigger molecules will mean more viscous, right? And so a lot of our gels, especially in potted soft gel systems, are thicker, right? Like, like so. Bigger molecule liquids like oligomers do not penetrate the skin and nail layers as easily as smaller molecule liquids like some monomers. Simple visual for you to understand. Again, imagine this is my bonder. It's really liquidy. You can hear it, right? Liquidy. Also another type of monomer we have or we know in the industry is the acrylic liquid, right? This is not acrylic liquid, but again, you can hear it. It's a liquid, right? These more liquid can penetrate obviously the skin more easily because they're liquid. That just makes sense, right? The more viscous stuff is less likely to penetrate the skin and cause allergic reaction. One of the reasons why I work with these products, 
Not really though, because frankly, when I was in the salon from 2013 to 2018 working full time, I never heard of an allergic reaction. I never even had heard of HEMA, if you can believe it, okay? So HEMA has come about, it's become an issue because of the DIY boom. So HEMA is not the problem. Now, this is a tangent, it really is. I'll make a video for you on that, I promise. It, HEMA is not the issue, is that the DIY community got access, a little too much access, <laughs> without enough education, which is why, you know, I sell education is actually the only thing I sell. I don't necessarily sell products, even though I'm affiliated with them. I don't care if you buy the products. I care that you buy the education and then the products. But either way, never had heard of HEMA. Like I knew it was in my ingredients, sure, right? But I never heard of it. Up until I stopped doing nails, then there was like this whole HEMA issue. So HEMA is actually a professional grade chemical that should be handled primarily by professionals. So if you are not going to be responsible about how you apply your nails and avoid skin contact at all costs, wear gloves, even when doing your nails, you can put a glove on the hand that you're not using, right? That you're not painting if you're working one hand at a time, but you never wanna grab your brushes and touch them with your fingers. Do not get gel on your skin. Either way, guys, HEMA has to do more with the inappropriate use of it versus it being a sensitizer, right? That leads into you know, allergies, huge tangent. Again, I like that it's a professional grade chemical. So, or I wouldn't try to do a keratin treatment at home, right? Not trying to damage my hair. I am glad that certain chemicals are for professional use only, okay? Or that if I use them, right, the liability is on me and it's on me to be careful, right? So just keep that in mind. I got a whole video on HEMA for you in the future, okay? So back to the topic. Nail gels typically have both oligomer and monomer and other ingredients, but these are usually the primarily ones. You see them as listed as the first one and the second one, if you have a good quality product. And ultimately, I repeat, the more viscous a gel is, the more oligomer content it has, usually. In potted soft gel systems, the viscosity will range depending on what the intended use of that gel ultimately is. But this is why, in general, bottles will be less viscous, more thin or runny, and I don't know about you, but I want the more resin gel oligomer -y stuff, okay? That's how it all translates in my brain. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you're a chemist and you're listening to this conversation. I want the best of the best, and again, so do most of your clients. In the salon, this was my base, guys, okay? This base here, Retail, I think, is $130 for 25 grams. I can get two of these, so that'd be like 260, right? For the price of one of these. Just two of these. Light curing resin is the most expensive resin in the industry. And obviously, when you're able to get it more viscous, more oligomery, more of that raw material, it's gonna be more expensive. But it's also going to be technically less allergic causing, okay? So hypoallergenic. Back to the conversation. I want the best of the best. And again, so do most of your clients, okay? Like if I want those puffy, cozy boots, I want UGG as long as I can afford UGG before I settle for anything comparable, right? By the way, other than feeling warm and cozy and stylish, those boots don't pay your bills, but your higher quality gel does. So invest in the best for your business. How do you know this? If you cannot read or understand the chemicals in a nail gel, right? I'm trying to break this down for you as much as I can. First and foremost, there is an ingredient document you have the legal right to if a manufacturer or distributor sells products to you, at least here in the States. These are called safety data sheets. And personally, there are four things I look for, which I will break down in a future video. But for now, these four things are, and I think you can kind of guess what they are, but here they are. How much oligomer? How much monomer? How much solvent? And are there any no-no type of chemicals? For me, a no-no type of chemical would be like formaldehyde, 
toluene, like anything that's carcinogenic, carcinogenic. But if you don't obtain the safety data sheets for your products, by the way, most of the time the ingredients will be listed on the pots or the bottles. Okay, so for example, this one is translated in English. This Japanese soft gel has a little sticker there. Um, Cocoa has already does that on there. So the ingredients will be on there for you to know. And if you don't know what the components in your gels are, like what is the oligomer or the monomer, I don't blame you, or the solvent, you could send an email to the company asking. But also some companies are getting more productive about this and actually are writing their information for consumers to read and understand. And I'll post these here on the screen for you to see what they look like. I mean, this is so helpful and I'm so thankful that they go that extra step to do this for you, okay? All right, so the science can be technical, believe me. In my research and what I've read, and believe me, I've spent hours trying to just break this down to a dummy level that I can understand. I just found that nothing is a hard and fast rule and that even though there is a rule, there might be a deviation, but like they say, like the exception does not make the rule or whatever the saying is, right? And so I tried to kind of pull out and just get you to understand that you want the bigger molecule stuff, right? The stuff that is in your pots usually will be that bigger molecule things. The stuff that is in your bottles, even your gels, is going to be the thinner stuff. So you just gotta be even more aware of not getting this stuff on the skin, okay? Because if it's thinner, it can crawl into your skin, especially if you remove the oils, right? That protective barrier. If you've given yourself an extremely overcut machine or dry e-file manicure, you're removing skin, you're opening the barriers for products to penetrate, don't do that. So ultimately, associate yourself with brands that are willing to help you understand why their premium ingredients matter. And personally, I am thankful for Japanese soft gel systems being the first to intrigue me, me, personally me, with all the science. And it wasn't technical, just telling me that oligomer was the main component of their gels was a big deal because now I understood, oh, those are bigger molecules. They are not hypersensitive products that can cause allergic reactions. Now, if you already have an allergy to a monomer, because remember, a monomer is the thinner stuff, right? That's it. You cannot use that again. An allergy is for life. I mean, there might be some scenarios where someone may get over it. I mean, it really depends up to your immune system, but just assume it's for life. And so if you are allergic to a monomer, whatever it may be, do not use it. That's it. It's done. You cannot use that monomer again. Find something else because you just cannot be exposed to it. Now, certain companies, again, have their safety data sheets. They will tell you if something is HEMA free, use that, right? Uh, but please make sure that it has like zero HEMA. One, two, three, four, five percent. You cannot use that product. All right, so for me, that's why I don't touch anything, guys. For the last nine years, all I've been using is potted soft gel systems, and they do have some bottle gels in there, but primarily I like to use the stuff in the pot. I always know that when something comes out, for me, my first question, I can honestly say that for all these years, it has been, is that a true gel? Is it all gel component? all gel component, okay, all gel component, meaning there's no solvent in there like acetone, alcohol, ethyl acetate, those are solvents, they dissolve. I want to work with true gels, the stuff that has more of the gel resin, oligomer stuff. Oh my gosh, I know I keep repeating myself. I am so sorry, but I just really wanna drive that in because I've been doing this for nine years and this is, I can promise, this is the main reason why I don't deviate from anything else because I know this is like true gel. This is probably as true of a gel as you can get. And I don't want anything cheaper. Again, if I can have the more expensive stuff, like whatever it be, like designer, right? For me, this is like designer product, it really is. I don't want anything else. I don't care who comes out with their new products because if it doesn't fall in this category, I'm not interested. Maybe I'm fancy, right? But that's fine, I want the best for me and my clients. And my students now, I've been retired from salon work for now five years, going on five years, and I want you, my community, my students to be, to use the best stuff. And for me, this is the best stuff. This is your designer product. Two to three versus one whole gallon of this guy's designer product. If you wanna learn more about Potted Soft Gel Systems after me raving here, you can get started with the free masterclass link in the description box below. Or if you are specifically interested in Cocoa's Japanese Soft Gel, I have a certification coming up. The link for that waitlist is also down in the description box below. 
early bird enrollment is opening up soon. All right, factor number one was intense, but absolutely important. Remember, quality ingredients will typically be the primary factor driving the cost of your gel nail products. And you want it that way. Factor number two, driving the cost of your gels up. So let's talk about packaging. Factor number two, packaging is so important in, to a brand. I don't resent any company that goes all out in their packaging, especially if what's inside is quality ingredients. But if what's inside is mediocre, I think you would agree with me that you much rather see less packaging and more quality ingredients. But of course, great packaging is super essential to a brand as a good first impression is key, right? And also good for ongoing brand awareness. A beautiful packaging will come at a cost of those. So I recommend that if you're captivated by packaging, that you also look into ingredients to ensure that you are paying more for ingredients and not necessarily the packaging. And lastly, factor number three, distribution costs. For example, the cost of getting those goods to you. Again, this is another factor that you want to weigh less in the price of your nail products. I don't know exactly how most American companies get their products, as in do they order their raw materials and then work in their labs or their production facilities here to design their products or if that happens somewhere else and they just get shipped their products in with their logos on containers, for example. I'm not sure. Oddly enough, I know a little bit more of what, what happens in Japan than what happens here in American companies, but they're also not in my niche. Like I don't do acrylics or hard gels, okay? For example, brands like Hokuis and Vetro manufacture their products from scratch in their own production facility, typically sometimes with their own chemists. Vetro, for example, will package their products in-house and import those to the States and Coco is will primarily make in their facility in Japan also, and then ship it here and bottle it here, cutting down the cost of distribution significantly. Sometimes you'll notice that an independent distributor's price may be slightly higher since they act as a middleman to sell that product to you. So if you're noticing that your products from your distributor, they're not the manufacturer of the product is high. It's more also having to do with the fact that they are a middleman to get you that product. So they have to take rightfully so their cut for being that broker to get you that product. So try to order direct from the manufacturer when possible. Again, you just wanna ensure that those costs like packaging and distribution are fractional and that you're not instead paying a premium for the cost of acquiring that product rather than what's inside. Well, look at you now, so educated. That is it for me in today's video. Remember those three key factors that determine the cost of your products, ingredients, packaging, and distribution. I hope you learned a ton with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video valuable, would you do me a favor and give it a thumbs up so that I may help more people? Do check out the description box below for any current resources and promo codes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.